Hello everybody, Frosty Random here, and welcome back. Uh, this is the team builder for WVF Week 6. I have a sore throat, so I'm going to make this quick here. We've got Covert Cloak, Clefable, uh, Coral Lay, with the Outwear ability. Draining Kiss, Sword Power, Calm Mind, Moonlight. This uh, with 252 HP, 152 Defense, 100 Calm, Special Defense, and 4 Speed. This speed is entirely to 1v1 a Spatra, whether it is Calm Mind or Illumina Crash or any set like that. Uh, it's entirely for that. It could secondary uh, take on like Team Lu and such. Uh, it can 1v1 certain mods, a Spatra, a Team Lu, and even Pre Marina if it's set up. Uh, next, we got Protective Pads, Guardian the Overquill with Terra Dark, Slow Swim, Throat Shop, Gunk Shot, Liquidation, Sword Stance, 2 p 2 Adamant. Attack 28 special defense and 228 speed. Uh, this outspeeds everything on his team in rain. And 228 adamant is to guarantee outspeed, uh, outspeed any of his mons below 75, I believe, um, and stuff like that. Even mons are like he's 80 and stuff like that don't really want to get hit by this thing. <clears throat> Next, you got Frog the Pelipper with the Damp Rock, Jizzle for the ability, so we have rain. Hurricane, Hydro Pump, U-Turn, Reverse, with the uh, usual Fizz Depth set of 248, 254, and 8 uh, Special Attack. Uh, not much to really say about Pelipper here, it's the same every week, let's be honest. Next we got Crab the Arachno with the Mystic Water, Water Bubble for the ability. Uh, Liquidation, Leech Life, Rain Dance, Power Split, 252 Adamant Attack, 32 Defense, and 224 Speed. Uh, the EV Spray will make a lot more sense for the next one I go over, and Power Split is to try and get... Uh, Attack from a max, uh, from a max eight, from a max attack slithering, which is attack stat, because base 102, uh, water bubble mystic or liquidations are super good into every mod on this team, including Petron. I will have graphics this week, by the way, everybody. Next is Wither, the Iron Jugger with heavy duty boots. We have quarter drive for the ability, of course. Tailwind, Q turn, Hurricane, and Dark Pulse, 56 uh, uh, defense. 220 special attack, 232 timid speed. Uh, the spread is to outspeed 105s, I believe. And then the heavy the boots because we have Tailwind for the Arachnid to try and sweep that endgame. Everything else is about usual on there. Lastly, we have Warden the Arch Aladon with the Shukaberry, Stamina for this week. Stealth Rock, Body Press, Electric Shot, Dragon Tail, 252 HP, 88 Bolt Defense, and 168 special attack. This is our designated lead this week. Um, even like the only thing that really goes against us is a designated lead slewing, uh, which definitely could come this week. Uh, it originally was a Goltango, but I decided against that as I had a Goltango on the other version of this team, which was a true conversion with Toad's Cool. Sorry for the uh, quality, my throat is sore. I was just doing some stuff. Uh, this video will be releasing July 26th, which is also my birthday. So that's going to be fun to see. Anyway, thank you all for watching, I'll see you all in the battle. Hello everybody, welcome back. It is Frosty Random, coach of your Tesco's Toxic Chains. And we are here for week six of the WPF. This is post commentary. Um, I would use the live commentary if the live commentary had anything really much to offer within it. Um, now you will see the post comp play with the live game, of course, as I'm not going to replay that at all. That makes no sense. And excuse me for my lower tone and softer voice. I have a sore throat, so I'm trying to take it a bit easy. Um, as I send the team builder, this releases July 26th, which is the day of my birthday. So that's going to be interesting. Um, this beginning here is really just us going over our matchup and the team that we are bringing for it. Um, as you can see uh, from the team builder, Clef, Overquill, Pelipper, Arachnid, Jugulus, and Arch. This looks like full rain with Clef as our dedicated spot for check. Um, I'm recording this a fair bit after the game, so I know the sets and everything that our opponent Dashing Sceptile brought, and I know everything that he's going to do within this game. Uh, so, on the opposing team, we see Espratha, Slitherwing, Primarina, Ting Lu, Rodon Fan, and Ogre Pond. I say here that uh, the Terras are Terra, 
Hound on Aspathra and Terra Electric on Rotom. The one Pokemon I didn't expect in this matchup from Dashing was actually Rotom Fan. I was fully expecting Petron to come in there instead. So the main thing I see here, uh, look back, is Arachnid actually goes nuts if it's not a defensive Slitherwing. Because it can hit this entire team uh, for a two hit at the very least. Especially if that's not a Fizz Def uh, Espathra. Liquidation leads like to about the same into it because Water Bubble, funny move. Uh, water Bubble into the Liquidation, funny button. Uh, so we have our load up here. Our designated is Arch. Uh, we do say good luck, have fun to dashing, of course, as we are respectful to our opponents here. Uh, no matter what happens, no matter what happens with the game, no matter how axy it is, we always say good luck, have fun. We are respectful to everyone around here. Uh, on lean, he sends it to Howard the Slitherwing. As I send it to Warden Yarchaladon, this is the only thing that was a bad lead for me and why I wanted to bring Tingo, but I have wanted rocks on our Shaladon. Uh, and looking back, to reflect on Gold Tingo, it would have been really good within this matchup because with the right moveset, so the lane can absolutely murder my entire team. Um, I'm here deliberating whether I should switch in Pelipper, and I actually do click the switch and move the switch button for Pelly. And uh, I'm like, okay, he has to if he's banded, he's going to probably just CC. Um, and if he's like a different item, he might just U-turn or something like that. So I try to get my rain up to get rain offense in. Dashing does a great job and predicts my power for switching to uh, put up Sunny Day and activate Tyler's per and activate the Little Wings per assist to attack Heidi. I'm over here like, okay, it's bulky, bulky Sunsetter. So it probably can't fit Wild Charge because it wants U turn, it wants CC, and it wants EQ. Uh, so I'm here like, okay, I can try to U turn Pelipper out on the expected switch, and I could just try and get uh, my rain back later, as I have manual rain as a record of this game, which is a bit unreliable, especially since it's only 5 turn rain. Uh, I'm never expecting a wild charge here, as I had prepped primary, like, no Slytherin set button and we never had wild charge. It was, always was first impression, U-turn, CC, uh, Earthquake, but this one does actually have Wild Charge, which is a great bring on Ashton's part, as he knew my main answer into offensive Slytherwing was Pelipper, and uh, I'm gonna forget that it gets Wild Charge. I did not forget, it's just I did not think that he would have it. And I do say in the live commentary at this point, fully straight up, I lost. I say that in live commentary. Um, I was defeated at this point because at this point I had recognized that I got completely outpressed and I pride myself on my prep as it as I just like and that's that's my main claim is that I always I always go in depth with prep as much as I can even if it means overthinking. So I send in Clefable here. Um, not recognizing that this could actually not, this could actually have dropped EQ for a five, for a sun boosted flare blitz just to, like it hits everything about just about as hard as um as EQ would and like yeah sun boost my moonlight but I don't click it because I don't think he's going to it. Meanwhile, he sun boosts flare blitz reveals that he's basically max attack adamant and citrus berry. Meanwhile, I just basically sacked my Cliff Fable for nothing. So there goes my dedicated Spothra answer. Um, I was fully expecting a switch, which is why I call mine it there. And I'm dedicated, I'm entirely slower. I have only four speed, two speed creep, stuff like Prim, um, and stuff like Ting Lu trying to, trying to speed creep me. But it didn't matter at that point. Um, I had, like, I, my answer to this thing was hope. <laughs> uh, it couldn't be a rack I didn't leave I didn't live a process this boosted wild charge and I never killed it back. Um, Overquill did was not intimidate this game. 
so it could not do anything defensively and needed that rain up which is now gone from Pelipper. Uh, you see here I am just looking at Arch and I'm like, okay, maybe he's Earth, maybe he's Earthquake over CC. This is the only way I can truly try. Is if you're a bulkier set and this doesn't poke up. Because what I should have done first turn was stay in at rocks calling the sunny day. There's no way I could have ever prepped for that sort of thing. And that was just a fantastic play on Dashing's part. He had completely outplayed and outprepped me, but he does CC here and does get the kill on Arch. Uh, no sturdy or anything like that, I want stamina. So he reveals that he's no U turn, which took me by surprise. He has revealed his entire moveset by now. And I, I have been in panic mode for a fair bit here. So, like hovering over, hovering over Jugulus, I see the only super victim moves in the game. It's like, okay, I could Tailwind to try and be faster, but I'm already faster. Tailwind amounts to nothing. And I go here looking over the rest of the Pokemon I have, and I'm like, I don't live a hit with anything. Not even Overcore can live a hit because of some boosted Flare Blitz, which is basically stab Flare Blitz at that point. And even CC I think killed because the portal is half boost. The only Mon that could do anything and that could scare this Pokemon out was a Jugulus because it could fake that I had Iron because it could fake that I had uh that I had air slash, excuse me. It could fake that I had air slash to try and counteract the um the, the sun if I had thought it'd be brought, which uh, I put the blame fully on myself for not prepping for a threat like this, even though I had mentioned it earlier in prep. Me and my group had shrugged it off, but it is entirely my fault that I did not keep it in mind throughout this game. Uh, until the start of this game, when I, I hit with that sun hit immediately, we were thick the entire time. Uh, I do just click the 50% accurate hurricane because it forces him out. And I, I, and in my words, I said, fuck it, we ball. Because I realized that I basically lost this match on the lead. And I do get the hurricane to hit, and I get the confusion. So I think Jugulus has uh, now proven that this thing might have certain grace as a, uh, as like a, uh, as a passive whenever it's out on the field with me. Because Jesus Christ, this thing. The amount of secondary effects it gets is insane. And the amount of hurricanes I hit outside of rain is also kind of insane. So, everyone give it up for Jugulus. Mon has been putting in work without really showing it uh, too, too much. But in the matchups it's brought, it's been doing very good. 1v1 to AV Gujra from Thomas, if you remember that game. Uh, super funny, but. That was very haxy, and like I said, this uh, Dragos might just have some ring grace. So I did a U-turn out here. I half expected him to switch to try and get rid of the confusion when I was trying to get initiative. But I figured it was better to switch anyway. And I have a couple different options. I can go Arachnid, as that actually 2 hits max HP uh, Prim. Lift Liquidation outside of rain at this point. Or I can go for the jugular and go over to him. I actually decided to go Arachnid because I could lift every, any hit coming from it if it doesn't hit itself in confusion here. Which it actually does hit itself in confusion, so it chips itself down just a bit more. And Arachnid could set up the rain dance for Overflow to come in later on. This the one thing about having a manual rain setter that doesn't hit it well, is that you're automatically at one less turn without any ship damage. And you have the risk of getting shipped down by something that you're afraid of. So I'm just deciding which word to pick here, and I think if I am correct, I just click Liquidation. Either that or I click Rain Dance, trying to set over the well for a possible break sweep here. It's weird. I do end up just clicking Liquidation though. He does withdraw Prim. So I get heavy damage into whatever he wants to send in, which is Tower of the Slytherin. Uh, liquidation from this point actually kills not the Slitherwing, and that's exactly what it did. So I actually ended up taking Slitherwing out, and at this point in the match, I'm like, okay, it's not a 6-0 at least. Let me see if I can really make this close by locking in and trying to make up for the lost resources that Slitherwing took from the battle. Which was a definite idea. 
because he sends out biggest fan, which is the Lord Alpha. And immediately, what's going through my mind is this is gonna hold switch. There's nothing else it should do, but full switch doesn't do half to me, no matter what it's doing. Meanwhile, look at the time. He's he has already picked his move. Volt switch is all. Volt switch is always the play here, no matter what. At least in my opinion. So I decide to sack. Do I sack the Fable here? Because there's no reason I should switch and jump for this. Like I'm, I'm just clicking moves at this point. So I decide to. I don't know what I'm doing this turn to be honest. I'm doing close commonly. I decide to rain dance here, taking advantage of his bolt switch that does two hit me. It's not a crit, it's just not bulky or rapid. It really needs the HP to be bulky. And the rain dance here, and then because uh, he was fully expecting the switch. I think he was expecting the Clefable sack. Um but I just let Arachnid get damage like except the rain dance up. So he sends out Precious, which is the Pokemon, trying to kill his Arachnid. I end up rain dancing, not liquidation like he thought he would. I think Leech Life did actually come into mind as a possible click to try and catch Pokemon off guard. Um, but I'm thinking this could possibly be Scarf, because Scarf Pokemon to counteract webs is one of Dash's favorite sets to do. It could also be Whiter, because it just that's him click a different move while still having the boost. Uh, and White Arbor isn't too much against uh, me in this matchup because I don't have the webs on Arachnid. Which was a good thing that I did because of the Defiant Boost of Ogopon, he would just win the game at this point. So I end up keeping Arachnid alive and I go to Jugulus, fully expecting the Ivy Cudgel, but he ends up substituting, which I never expected. Sub -over. We were always expecting Scar for the U turn. I did not know what to make of a sub over pond. I'm like, this could be sub leech and I'm be playing, but there's no reason I'm gonna send it out to see what I'm It's up going for play rough, uh, which does do over half, which is what I expected. Uh, I, I didn't U turn because U turn never broke sub. So I ended up just full on hurricaning. Could have also Dark Pulse, but I'm in the lane. Hurricane can never miss. There's no reason to not go for a stab Hurricane. Like, even with the sub up, there's no reason not to go for it. They both break sub anyway. Sorry. Um, I end up, I think, preserving Jugulus uh, here. Higher that, or I end up sacking it. I think I preserve it. Yeah, I end up sacking Clefable here. Because I think Jugulus is a super good late game, considering that Undertale went to outspeeds everything. And Flying Dark hits about the entirety of his team. And the one mon, like two mons that want to take moves like that are Prim and Tinkeroo, both of which I can use for not for free. And Prim doesn't want to get shipped down much more than that. So we still have like two turns of rain left. Sack the Fable. Now's the time to bring Garmin in. They have Throat Shop on this for Petra Rifle's Pepper Shot. I did not mention that during the team builder. But I'm trying my best to really just try and bring this game back. Um, I see that the only move I can Oko in here is Gun Shot. Because well, the problem with Dark Stab is that 80 base power. Dark moves are not base power wise, if there was a 120 base power dark type move, physical or special, it would definitely be wrong all the time. Um, because dark is a super good type. I do end up landing the gunk shot here though, it does kill over the pond, so this is at the very least, this is at the very most a 4 0, and uh, there was only one turn left of rain, I miscounted even during the playback. I ended up using my one turn of rain well, because the only way I can set it back up is if a rack when it comes back out and is able to outspeed like a primo, you know, and, and uh, get that rain set up so I can kill the other kill on the kill. But he ends up sending, um, he's sending Red Ops Fan out. Uh, and like I said, and he's already clicked his move. 
he did not hesitate at all to put his move. In which I forget the exact set this is. I don't think it's scarf. I think it's just full on. But um I can check what the set is, but at this point it doesn't really matter. Um I, I I'm checking the set as we speak, I'm not even paying attention to the match. It was Scarf Max Speed Max Special Attack. So we're in Guardian. I um so we're still here. I could Terra Dark. But at this point, I don't think Terra wouldn't have mattered if he's just gonna Terra Electric and Volt Switch, or even just Volt Switch in general. So I'm running out of time here, obviously. What I'm going to do is just quick Solar Stance on the fact that he will Volt Switch. He does Terra Electric, though. If he hadn't Terra Electric, I would do the two Volt Switches, which would make my, um, my Overquill a bit better into the rest of the scene as it could outspeed like 10. To a KO in the rain um, outside of the game. So he ends up doing heavy damage to me with Terra Electric Scarf for the switch. Uh, which is, I don't even think that would be good. I thought, I thought if he brought, I thought if he brought Pan, it'd be like a. I, I thought it'd be like a. Oh, what's upset? So he ends up bringing out a spot throw, which is guaranteed faster than me. Uh, one, because speed, speed just doesn't activate. But, like, even if it's a bit of speed investment, or it's just protect, it's going to be faster. I am faster, though. If it's not protecting, it's not that much investment. 224 Adamant still outspeeds everything I need to. I think I end up thinking that this is just going to tear around to otherwise. I... Uh, do I sack over for here? I don't remember this match too, too much. I've been too busy. Uh, like I said, it's supposed to come I think I end up just throw a chop in here, because I know I can't do a terror blast, but it ends up killing me with Deagling and outspeeding. Which, uh, it's, this is a fully offensive Espathra, and which does just win the game. Um, there's nothing much I can do about that lead game. Um, that Slitherwing set was the, was like the only set that really killed my team, killed my hit. It was the perfect set to kill the exact team I brought. If I had brought Reflect Gold Dango, it would not have done that as well on my team because Reflect would have made it take so much easier to take. Um, I sent out a Raccoonit here, which guaranteed he lives in a Illumina Crash. And if it's not much special attack, it is actually a um, guaranteed clip 2 based on its natural bulk. Uh, but as you will see here soon, it will not go to when it crashes based on its first one's damage, it does 90. Which means that the next one will do 180. If it's the same exact roll. We do end up almost killing Pandora here though. I do recover to 191, which means that it could have lived. Uh, if I if I am correct. But I think it would I think the first one was a little roll. Because it was a chance to kill that um, But this game is over. Rodon Fan just beats me with Scarf. And I know this at this point. The game has been over since turn 2. Turn 3, really. Oh my god, turn 2. He doesn't have plenty of room to crash here. There's not much I can add in terms of, um, in terms of commentary here. So I... So, I just sent Jugulus in, that's already slower. Jugulus, like, not even Tailwind Jugulus can me at this point. There's a more offensive set. So, this game has been over. Um, I'm gonna end this a bit early, that way I don't have to show my throat more. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been Frosty Random, Coach Your Tusk goes as hot as chains. We'll see you all next time. Bye everybody. Thank <laughs> you.